LoRAWAN is a wireless protocol widely used in various fields such as smart cities, smart homes, smart agriculture, and smart industry. It features low power consumption, long-range transmission, and wide coverage. To use LoRAWAN, we need a LoRAWAN gateway to connect nodes and network servers. The gateway receives data sent from nodes and forwards it to the network server. In this tutorial, we will use a full duplex LoRAWAN gateway and an SOC wireless module testing kit to demonstrate how to configure LoRAWAN network communication. We will start with local deployment using a Debian server and configure it using SSH. If you are using a public server, the configuration principles are the same. You can choose software that suits your preferences for configuration and don't have to follow the tutorial's tools completely. By default, SSH and the root account are disabled on a Debian server, which prevents us from logging in via SSH. Therefore, we need to manually enable SSH and the root account. If you are using a different operating system, you can skip the corresponding configuration steps. First, we need to install SSH. Open the terminal and enter the following command, then enter your login password. If there are any errors during the installation, you can try reinstalling with the following command. Once the installation is complete, the SSH service will be enabled by default. If you need to manually start it, you can use the following command. If your Debian system has a graphical interface, it may prompt you to enter the administrator password during startup. Enter the password and click Authentica. Now, the SSH service has been successfully enabled. Here, you can choose the connection tool according to your own situation. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. For convenience, the video uses the local terminal to directly access the server via SSH. To connect to the server in the terminal, use the following command format. If you are using a cloud server, you can find the IP address and SSH port number on the management page. Next, enter the password, then enter yes to confirm the connection. This way, we have successfully connected to the Debian server via SSH. Next, we need to install Docker containers and use Docker containers to deploy ChirpStack. First, we need to upgrade the system. Next, we need to install the curl tool. You can use either of the following two commands to install, depending on your system version. Next, we can use the official installation script to automatically install Docker. Next, we also need to install and deploy Docker Compose. You can also use the official website command to install it directly. Apply executable permissions to the standalone binary in the target path for the installation. Now, we have successfully installed Docker containers. Let's talk about how to quickly deploy the ChirpStack service. ChirpStack is an open-source IoT platform used for managing and monitoring IoT devices. First, enter the following command in the command line to clone the ChirpStack GitHub repository. Then, go to the project folder. Next, start the project. Then, enter the following command to check the running status of the Docker Compose containers. If the following content is displayed, it means the Chirp stack has been successfully installed. Now, you can use a web browser to access the local port 8080 to see the Chirp stack service login page. The default login username and password are admin slash admin. After successful login, you will have access to the ChirpStack dashboard. At this point, ChirpStack has been successfully installed on the server. Before configuring ChirpStack, 
We need to modify the chirp stack configuration file because the LoRAWAN gateway used in the demonstration only supports the CN470 frequency band region. Therefore, we need to manually add region files. Here are the specific steps. First, go to the chirpstack docker folder. Then, open the chirpstack.toml file using a text editor like Vim. In the chirpstack.toml file, find the section where the region needs to be added. You can add regions according to your needs. Here, we will add all the regions that may be used. After completing the additions, press the escape key, enter, WQ. To save the modifications. Next, open the chirpstack gateway bridge.toml file using Vim. In the chirpstack gateway bridge.toml file, find the section that needs to be modified. Change EU868 to CN470 underscore zero. After completing the modification, press the escape key, enter, WQ. To save the modifications. Finally, open the docker compose.yml file using Vim. In the docker compose.yml file, find the section that needs to be modified. Change chirpstack gateway bridge EU868 to chirpstack gateway bridge CN470 underscore zero. After completing the modification, press the escape key, enter, WQ. To save the modifications. The above method uses the Vim editor for modifications, but you can also use other editors or the file management system of SSH software for modifications. After making the modifications, restart the ChirpStack service. Now, we need to re-enter the ChirpStack to set the device configuration file. First, click on the Device Profiles tab, then click the Add Device Profile button. In the General tab, you can freely set the name field. In the Region field, since the gateway used in the demonstration only supports the CN470 standard, it needs to be set as CN470. Similarly, the region configuration needs to be set as CN470 underscore zero. In the Mac version field, set it to LoRAWAN 1.0.2 according to the gateway's settings. In the regional parameters revision field, set it to be according to the gateway's settings. In the ADR algorithm field, it is recommended to keep the default settings, but you can change it according to the actual situation. In LoRAWAN, Class A, Class B, and Class C refer to the communication modes of devices. However, in this tutorial, we won't go into detail about the differences between these modes. For stability, we will enable Class C communication mode and set the Class C confirm downlink timeout to zero to ensure that the device can receive downlink data in a timely manner. Next, we need to add a gateway. Click on the Gateways tab, then click the Add Gateway button. In the General tab, you can freely set the name field. Please note that the gateway ID field needs to be unique within the same environment and server to avoid duplicate IDs. You can click the Generate Random button to generate a random identifier. In the Stats Interval field, you can set it according to the actual situation, but the default value is recommended. After setting this, click the Submit button to save. Next, we need to configure the gateway to connect to the server. Before starting, make sure the gateway is powered on and connected to the network with an Ethernet cable. The default gateway address for the demonstration device is 192.168.10.1. To avoid network conflicts, do not connect devices with the same gateway address. In the Wi-Fi list on your computer, find the Wi-Fi name of the gateway and connect to it. By default, this Wi-Fi does not have a password, so you can connect directly. Now, we need to use a browser to access 192.168.10.1 for gateway configuration. The default password is root. On the gateway management page, 
you can perform gateway configuration, but we won't go into detail here. Go to the gateway settings in low RA1 network settings. The gateway ID is the gateway ID configured in the server settings. The server address is the address of the ChirpStack server you deployed, which is 10.100.0.135 here. After completing this, simply click Save and Apply. Wait for the prompt that the configuration has been applied. Now, go back to ChirpStack and go to the Gateway section. After a moment, refresh the page and you will see the added gateway displayed as online. At this point, the gateway has successfully connected to the server. These steps may seem complex, but as long as you follow the above steps, you can easily configure the gateway to connect to the server. First, we need to connect the wireless module to the server via the gateway and send data. We will use the E78-400 TBL02 kit for demonstration. First, we need to add an application on the ChirpStack management page. Click on Applications, then click Add Application. Here, you can enter any application name and click Submit to save. Next, click Add Device. Similarly, on the Add Device page, you can enter any device name, but you need to ensure that the device EUI is unique within the same server. You can also use a randomly generated EUI. In the Device Profiles section, select the gateway we just configured. After completing this, click Submit. After successfully adding, you will be redirected to the OTAA keys. Again, ensure uniqueness, and you can use randomly generated keys. After completing this, click Submit. Next, Let's see how to connect to the ChirpStack server using the E78-400 TBL02 onboard module. Before starting, you need to familiarize yourself with the command rules and usage of the E78-470LN22S module, E78-400 TBL02 onboard module. You can refer to the Ebyte product technical manual for this. Now, let's look at the specific configuration steps. Download and use the XCOM software, which can be found in the Ebyte product-related downloads. Connect the E78-400 TBL02 to the computer. The default baud rate, data bits, parity, and stop bits are 9600, 8, none, 1. After opening the serial port, enter all the necessary configuration content in the multiple send pages. Among them, at plus kapui can be filled with all zeros, at plus devui is the device EUI configured earlier, at plus cap key is the application key filled in last. You can find the usage of other commands in the technical manual. Send the commands one by one until you reach at plus cjoan equals 1104, where you need to wait for a successful connection and return OK before sending data. After successfully sending, go back to the server. In the application section, find the added application. Under the devices page, click on the device you just added. In the events page within the device, you can see the data sent via SCUM. This way, you have successfully accessed the ChirpStack server using the E78-400 TBL02. Thank you for watching this tutorial. We have provided comprehensive explanations on server deployment, gateway configuration, and device registration. We hope it has been helpful to you. We believe that through this tutorial, you have learned how to configure low RAWAN effectively. We wish you great success in your future applications.